Chapter 67 The New Earth And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Revelation 21, verse 1 The fire that consumes the wicked purifies the earth. Every trace of the curse is swept away. No eternally burning hell will keep before the ransomed the fearful consequences of sin. One reminder alone remains. Our Redeemer will ever bear the marks of His crucifixion. Upon His wounded head, His hands and feet, are the only traces of the cruel work that sin has wrought. O Tower of the Flock, the stronghold of the Daughter of Zion, unto Thee shall it come, even the first dominion. Micah 4, verse 8. The kingdom forfeited by sin Christ has regained, and the redeemed are to possess it with him. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. Psalm 37, verse 29. A fear of making the saints' inheritance seem too material has led many to spiritualize away the very truths which lead us to look upon the new earth as our home. Christ assured his disciples that he went to prepare mansions for them. Those who accept the teachings of God's word will not be wholly ignorant concerning the heavenly abode. And yet the Apostle Paul declares, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. Human language is inadequate to describe the reward of the righteous. It will be known only to those who behold it. No finite mind can comprehend the glory of the paradise of God. In the Bible, the inheritance of the saved is called a country. Hebrews 11, verses 14 through 16. There the great shepherd leads his flock to fountains of living waters. The tree of life yields its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the service of the nations. There are ever-flowing streams, clear as crystal, and beside them waving trees cast their shadows upon the paths prepared for the ransomed of the Lord. There the wide-spreading plains swell into hills of beauty, and the mountains of God rear their lofty summits. On those peaceful plains, beside those living streams, God's people, so long pilgrims and wanderers, shall find a home. The New Jerusalem There is the New Jerusalem, having the glory of God, her light like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Revelation 21, verse 11. Saith the Lord, I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. Isaiah 65, verse 19. The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelation 21, verses 3 and 4. In the city of God there shall be no night, none will need or desire repose. There will be no weariness in doing the will of God and offering praise to his name. We shall ever feel the freshness of the morning and shall ever be far from its close. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light. Revelation 22, verse 5. The light of the sun will be superseded by a radiance which is not painfully dazzling, yet which immeasurably surpasses the brightness of our noontide. The glory of God and the Lamb floods the holy city with unfading light. The redeemed walk in the sunless glory of perpetual day. I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Revelation 21, verse 22. The people of God are privileged to hold open communion with the Father and the Son. Now we see through a glass darkly, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12. We behold the image of God reflected as in a mirror in the works of nature and in his dealings with men. But then we shall see him face to face, without a dimming veil between. We shall stand in his presence and gaze upon the glory of his countenance. There immortal minds will study with never-failing delight the wonders of creative power. 
the mysteries of redeeming love, there is no cruel, deceiving foe to tempt to forgetfulness of God. Every faculty will be developed, every capacity increased. The acquirement of knowledge will not weary the mind or exhaust the energies. There the grandest enterprises may be carried forward, the loftiest aspirations reached, the highest ambitions realized, and still there will arise new heights to surmount, new wonders to admire, new truths to comprehend, fresh objects to call forth the powers of mind and soul and body. And as the years of eternity roll, they will bring richer and more glorious revelations of God and of Christ. As knowledge is progressive, so will love, reverence, and happiness increase. The more men learn of God, the greater will be their admiration of His character. As Jesus opens before them the riches of redemption and the amazing achievements in the great controversy with Satan, the hearts of the ransomed beat with a stronger devotion, and they sweep the harps of gold with a firmer hand, and ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands of voices unite to swell the mighty chorus of praise. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. Revelation 5, verse 13. Sin and sinners are no more. God's entire universe is clean, and the great controversy is forever ended.